Hello friends, I'm Professor John Gallagher, and welcome to what for many may be their first video in Raspberry Pi School. This is the Headless Pi install, that means setting up a Raspberry Pi without connecting it directly to a keyboard or mouse. I've created this video to help those new to the Raspberry Pi to get their board set up so that they can begin working on maker projects like the ones you'll find on my YouTube channel. Seeking Professor G, you are. Come to the right place you have. Now, if you bought a Raspberry Pi like any of these, you don't have enough to start. There's no power supply, no keyboard, no monitor, no mouse. And while there's no hard drive on the Pi, it does use an SD card for storage, but none of the base Pis even come with an SD card, let alone the operating system needed to run it. But fear not, we'll take you through the setup process step by step, so you're ready to start making. Now just a quick note for my students, and this might apply to students at other university campuses as well, Raspberry Pis on campus need to be set up for Wi-Fi by registering what's called a MAC address. So these devices are treated like they were game consoles or smart speakers. There's a separate procedure for this, and I've included this in another video in the playlist. So if you're a student in my on-campus university class, skip to this video. Now I'm going to be setting up a Raspberry Pi 3 Model A Plus because that's the model that my students are using, but the steps I'm about to show you should work on any of the other Wi-Fi capable Pi boards as well. Now before a Raspberry Pi can do anything, we've got to give it some software. And while on a typical computer your software is installed on a hard drive, on a Pi we're actually going to install the software on a micro SD card. Now the technique we're going to demonstrate is known as the headless Raspberry Pi setup. And that's because we perform the setup without connecting the Pi to a monitor, keyboard, or mouse. Now if you've got a Mac, this is definitely the technique that you want to use because you don't have a wired keyboard or mouse that you can easily connect to the Raspberry Pi. Now you're also going to need a micro SD card. 8 gigs or more in size is what you'll want. Anything more than 32 gigs is over kill. If you don't have one of these, you can buy it online for less than 10 bucks. Some Mac users might need an SD card reader too, because many Macs don't have an SD card reader slot. Card readers are pretty cheap. You can also get those online for less than 10 bucks. And also, if you don't have one, you're going to need a power supply that works with the Pi. Now, Raspberry Pis before the Pi 4 could use a 2.5 amp 5 volt power supply, but if you need to buy one, you can just search for a power supply for your Pi type. You'll also want a good high quality cable with a micro USB plug on one end that plugs into the Pi. Now, Apple users, beware, you might not have a cable that has a micro USB connector on one end because that's a connector that's not used in any Apple products like iPhones or AirPods. Now the other end of the cable has to plug into your power supply and a standard USB is probably what you'll need. And if you don't have a power supply or cable, you can buy one online for less than 10 bucks. I recommend one with an on-off switch. That's a nice feature because you can power down your Pi without having to unplug it. And if you're curious, I've linked to examples of all of these products in a follow along document that you can find at bit.ly slash headless dash Pi. That's all one word, all lowercase. And this document also has step-by-step -step instructions where you can copy and paste any of the commands that we're going to be typing in and avoid any risk of typos. So we'll get the installation software that we need by opening a browser and heading to raspberrypi.com. And from this page, we can select software from the tab bar at the top, then scroll down and select the download for your computer's operating system. My machine is recognized as Mac OS, so I'm going to get the right version here. Then my browser asks me if I want to save the file, I'm going to select desktop. If your browser doesn't ask you where you want to save the file, then it's likely going to be saved to your downloads folder. Then after your download is finished, find the file that you've just downloaded, open it, and follow the installation procedures. So on the Mac, I open a .dmg file, I drag the Raspberry Pi imager into my applications folder, and now I've got the imager on my computer so I can close this window, and I can delete both of these icons from my desktop. Then I launch the application I just installed. On the Mac, I press Command Spacebar to open up Spotlight, and I can type Raspberry Pi in this box. I see the name of the application I just installed. I'll press Enter, and the program runs. I get a warning that I've downloaded this from the internet. Yes, I meant to do this, so I'll click Open. Now we need to get our micro SD card ready. I'm using a 32 gigabyte card. This card will act like our hard drive, so we're gonna store the Raspberry Pi operating system on here and any other files that we're gonna be using. Slide this card into the slot of your card reader. It only goes in one way, so if it looks crooked, that's the wrong way. The metal teeth slide into the card reader first. Some card readers are spring-loaded, not all of them are. So for mine, it's not until I push in a little bit that the card actually snaps into place. Then plug your card reader into your computer. You should see it appears on your computer like any flash drive. This is a brand new card, so my card is named No Name. Your card may be named something different, but be aware that if you have anything on this card, it's about to be deleted and be replaced by the Raspberry Pi operating system. Next, back in the Raspberry Pi Imager app, select Choose OS. You'll see a bunch of different options here, but the top option that says Recommended should be fine for our use, so I'm going to select that. Then click Choose Storage. It'll identify any storage devices that are plugged into your computer. Make sure you select the right ones. So I'm going to select the generic mass storage, the one that's about 32 gig. That's my SD card. I do not want to format over my two terabyte drive where I store all my videos. That would be bad. 
And next we want to bring up the advanced setting options by clicking on the gear in the lower right hand corner. This will give us several additional options that'll let us set our Pi's hostname, password, and configure our Wi-Fi network, which is just what we want to do. If you're asked if you want to pre-fill your Wi-Fi password, select yes if you're using a Pi on the same network that your computer is currently connected to. You might also be asked for your computer's username and password. That's the name you use when you log into your computer when you start it up. Enter that if asked, then select allow. And then here's the advanced settings dialog. Under the image configuration options, leave as for this session only if you're only using these options once, but if you're going to be setting up multiple pies with the same options, you can select to always use. I'm gonna select for this session only, then select host name. This is the name that you're gonna give your Raspberry Pi. So choose something unique to you and your use. Host names need to be one word, all lowercase. They can include numbers and hyphens, but you can't start with a hyphen. I'm gonna call mine Prof G Pi. Then select Enable SSH. SSH stands for Secure Shell. This is how we access our Pi from our computer over the internet using a terminal program. So we do want to enable this, make sure it's checked. And then we typically log into the Pi using the username Pi, that's P-I, both lowercase. And here's where you enter the password that you will use for that user. So passwords need to be at least eight characters. Then we can scroll for more options. If you selected prefill Wi-Fi, you should see the name of the Wi-Fi network that your computer is currently connected to. That's what you see entered as SSID, and the password should also be filled in. If you want to connect to a different network, for example, maybe instead you want to use your mobile phone as a hotspot, then be sure to enter that network name under SSID. So it's typically the name of your mobile phone if you're using that as a hotspot, and then enter the password that you would use to access the Wi-Fi network, such as your hotspot's password. Then for Wi-Fi country, the default is GB for Great Britain. That's the host nation of the kind folks at Raspberry Pi. Thank you to our British friends. But I'm in the United States, so I'm gonna scroll and select US. Then select Set Locale Settings. This may be pre-filled in based on your computer settings. There's no setting for Boston, the city that I'm in, but we share a time zone with New York City, so this is accurate. And if you need to change this, just pull down the time zone menu and find a city in your time zone. Also, if your keyboard layout is different than what's shown, make sure that you change this pull-down menu, but I'm in the US and I bought my Mac in the US, so I have a US keyboard. I'll keep all of these other options the same. I'm gonna select play sound when finished. That's nice to do because sometimes the download and card setup will take quite a while. Then click save, then select the right button. You'll be asked to confirm that you are about to replace the date on your micro SD card. Yes, that is what I wanna do. You may be asked to enter your computer's password for approval. Do that if you need to. And then your computer will spend several minutes downloading, writing, and verifying your SD card. You might notice that your card disappears from your computer, then it briefly reappears, it's named boot. But then when you're done, it will be unmounted from your computer and you won't see it there anymore. Then you can click continue and you can quit out of the Raspberry Pi imager program. But once the boot volume goes away, then you can eject your micro SD card from your card reader and plug that into your Raspberry Pi. So I've ejected my micro SD card. I'm showing you a Pi 3A Plus, and if you flip it over, this is the slot where the SD card goes. And it should be face down with uh, copper teeth going in this slot. Again, it only lines up one way, so if it looks crooked, it's not correct, but this is correct. Then take your USB cable, plug in your Pi, and you should see the Pi boot. These lights will flash, and in about 30 seconds, hopefully, your Pi will connect to your Wi-Fi network, and you're ready to connect in via terminal. So if you're following along the step-by-step -step document at bit.ly slash headlish dash pi, we're now ready to log into the Pi. So I'm going to open my Mac's terminal program, command spacebar open spotlight. I'll just type in terminal and press return and the terminal program launches. I'll press command plus a few times to increase the font. Windows users, you probably want to use a program like Putty, P-U-T-T-Y, and you can search online to find out how you can download and install that free program if you don't already have it. Next, I'm going to enter the SSS-keygen command, and instead of typing it in, I'm going to copy and paste this directly from our web page. There's a chance that if you enter this at the prompt and press return, you might not notice any change in the output. If so, that might be the case for some users, but hopefully if you just continue, everything else will work fine. Next, you want to log into your Pi using the SSH command. So here, in our terminal at the prompt, type in SSH space Pi at and then your host name. That's the host name you entered when you set up your Pi. I gave my Pi the host name Prof G Pi. You wanna enter your host name, then add a dot and local at the end, then press return. Then you might get a few messages here. Some might even seem a bit scary, depending on your configuration. You may have some security messages, but you can say yes to all of the prompts. Everything should be okay. 
Then when asked for your password, you want to use the same password that you had set earlier in your video when you were installing the Raspberry Pi operating system on your SD card. And if everything works properly, you should see to the left of the prompt that you're logged in as Pi, at, and the host name of your Raspberry Pi. And if so, congratulations! You've just performed a headless install. Now before we're done setting things up, let's make sure that we've updated our Pi so that it's running the latest versions of its software. Now we do this by using two commands we see in step 8. Both of these commands use the apt-get tool. Now the first one I want you to copy is this one that says sudo apt-get update-y. Paste that into the terminal, press return, and what this does is it's going to download the updates from the internet. Now we'll see a bunch of text scroll by. Sometimes it might look like it's stalled, but be patient. Now I'm speeding up the video here so that you don't have to wait for my install. Mine took about a minute to run, but your mileage may vary. And then once you're back at the prompt again, we can return to the instruction page. We can highlight this last command, sudo apt-get upgrade-y. Paste that at the prompt, press return. This installs the updates that you just downloaded, but it'll take longer to run. Mine took about eight minutes sometimes it takes as many as 12 minutes again be patient sometimes it looks like it's stalling but just grab a beverage it'll eventually finish up and you'll be returned to the prompt and at this point we've installed the raspberry pi os we've given our pi a new host name and password and we've upgraded all of our software now if you do ever want to change your host name or password on your pi you can do that with the command sudo raspy config and i'll do that now just so that you can see how this works so this text-based program runs. You can use your arrow keys to navigate through these menus, press return to select an option that you've highlighted. The system option will take you to a sub-menu where you can change your password and your host name. Use the left and right arrows to select the options along the bottom, and I'll just back out and finish. Now there's one more important command I want to cover before finishing this video, that's sudo halt. Now you should type this in whenever you're done using your Pi. Most folks who shut off power to their Pi or unplug it won't run into any problems, but it is possible that if your Pi were writing to the SD card at the time you powered down, you could potentially corrupt data, so sudo halt performs a proper shutdown. Now also remember after you've done a sudo halt, you'll want to restart your Pi, so you have to turn it off and turn it on again. But congratulations, you're ready to begin Pi projects. Now, if you found this useful, there are lots more project tutorials on my YouTube channel. Liking, subscribing, commenting, and telling others about these videos helps surface the content in YouTube search, so that really helps me out. And be sure to share what you build. I look forward to celebrating your work. Now make something awesome.